Good morning. On behalf of Emmanuel Congregational United Church of Christ, I welcome you. A big welcome to our radio audience on WMSA, as well as those who are at home listening to us on YouTube. We're grateful you could join us. Whoever you are, wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here, regardless of gender, age, orientation, socioeconomic status, disability, race, or ethnicity, or whatever barrier you think keeps you from a full relationship with God. It doesn't exist here, and you are always welcome. I want to thank Jim and Kathleen for their help with live music. They've been a godsend over the past few months. And uh, a big thank you to Miss Jane for her children's stories, and Forrest Kimball is our liturgist today. A big thank you to him. This coming week, our activities continue as they have been. Prayer breakfast meets via Zoom Tuesday morning at 9 a.m. If you need information about joining us, just contact me or uh, check your email if you're on our email list. If you're not, let me know what your email is and we'll get you on that list. Also, our book groups, there's two. One meets Tuesday morning at 10 a.m., same Zoom link and the other meets Wednesday night at 7 p.m. We have coffee hour together via Zoom Thursday morning at 10 a.m. And the Thursday night gathering at 6.30 uh, doesn't seem to be very well attended, so we'll cancel that this coming week. Also, for those wondering when we're gonna be able to come together and join for worship, I want to let you know next Sunday, July 5th, we will have worship together here in the building, in person. This is a weekend we all enjoy immensely. And Jim plays patriotic music and uh, some of our very favorites, like the Stars and Stripes Forever. So if you would like to come and join us for that, please do. It, you'll be able to hear it on on your computer at home or the radio as well. But we were glad to say that we hope to see you next week. There are a couple things we would ask of you though. We are asking everyone to wear a mask or a face shield when you enter the building. We'll have some available if you don't have one or have forgotten one. There will be hand sanitizer throughout the building when you enter the building and enter a room please use it. And um, we also ask that you maintain that six foot distance from one another. The chairs have all been moved, so you'll be sitting at safe distances and uh, we're, we're gonna try our best to continue to keep everyone safe. If at any time uh, the infection rate rises locally to a, a, a place that we're not comfortable with, we will revert back to just online worship but for the time being things are looking good in st lawrence county and we're grateful to be able to come together next week so i'm looking forward to that i hope you are too i would invite you now to pause for a moment quiet your hearts and your minds just prepare that space to enter into the presence of the risen christ god bless This morning's call to worship 
is going to be begun by the children of the church. This week I asked them if they would be willing to create a poster, each one of them, a poster of a thing or a person who reminds them of Jesus. When I see a rainbow, I think of God's promise. When I see nature, I think of Jesus. When I see stars, I think of Jesus. When I see a cross, I think of Jesus. When I think of animals, I see Jesus. When I see a manger, I think of Jesus. The person that reminds us of God is Grandma Judy because she loves everyone equally. She gives an amazing advice. She kind. She sees good in everyone. She has faith in us and she's always patient. Grandma! <laughs> and no, I did not put them up to that. <laughs> Welcome. In the name of God, welcome. God's love stretches wide, ready to embrace all with love. You who are thirsty for the presence of God, welcome. May your thirst be satisfied. You who long for a caring touch, welcome. May you know God's love through the care of this community. In the name of God, welcome to all. Let us drink deeply of God's presence and share this grace with one another. Come, let us worship. Our first hymn of praise is a familiar one to those here at Emmanuel. It's, it's done as a call and response. So I'm going to sing a phrase. Kathleen's going to sing it back, and I invite you to join us in that. Bond of love, we are one. 
God of steadfast love. Today, we remember Jesus' words. Anyone who welcomes you welcomes me. And anyone who welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Holy One, inspire us to welcome the outcast as we would welcome you. To do what we can to provide water to the stranger and to trust always that you will be there. Remind us that kindness is brave, but always worthwhile, and that where love is, there you are. Amen. Holy God, Jesus taught what it means to welcome and showed a beautiful and beloved community where there is room for all. For times when we have created our own closed communities, forgive us. For times we have excluded others because of who they are or what they believe, forgive us. For times when we think that our way is a better way than other ways, Forgive us for the times we don't want to find things in common with or love others who are different from us. Forgive us for the times we have become so comfortable in our lives that we don't want to be uncomfortable by welcoming people who are beyond our doors. Forgive us. May we extend the welcome we receive through your spirit and may we remember that in the holy act of welcoming others, we welcome you. Amen. We are born in love and we live in love. Each day the spirit of love speaks anew and guides in a love that transcends the world's coldness and fear. Thanks be to God. Let us offer one another signs of reconciliation and love if someone is nearby, wish them the peace of Christ. The peace of Christ be with you.
So this is the time we always share our joys and thanksgivings. And since this has been pre-recorded, I, I don't have a lot of those in front of me today. But Jane Dubray says that it is such a joy to work with Morgan as she takes the rough footage for the children's story and turns it into something special. Her expertise makes me look good, and I really enjoy working with her. And I, too, am grateful. Morgan bailed me out this week, too. I was having trouble pumping up some volume on one of mine. And, and this week, I promise you folks, we will work at uh, getting these videos to sync up better. I'll have to call a help desk and get some real help. Uh, also, big joy. Vicky's daughter, Vanessa, gave birth to a baby girl around 11.30 Friday night. So we, she's over the moon, and so are we. We have prayed for nine months for this baby to be born safely. And so she's here, and we rejoice. Also, probably the biggest joy is next week, July 5th, we will be able to worship in person with one another in our sanctuary. So I look forward to seeing all of you then. Now I invite you to enjoy the children's message. Hi kids, I need your help. Do you see what I have here? It's an invitation. Who is it to? It's an invitation to Jesus. If we open it up, what is the invitation to Jesus for? Well, I want to invite Jesus to my house for dinner. How can I get this invitation to Jesus? How would you send an invitation to someone? Could you tweet them? Let's send them a text message. We can send them an email. Everybody has Facebook. Let's leave him a voicemail. We can send him an email, like when we pray. All of those are good ways to try to send a message, but sending a message to heaven will be difficult. I know, I can learn how to send the message from reading my Bible. Matthew chapter 10 says, Anyone who welcomes you welcomes me. And anyone who welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Which, by the way, is God. Jesus also says, Suppose someone gives even a cold cup of water to a little one who follows me. That person will certainly be rewarded. Jesus tells his disciples that whoever invites them is also inviting Jesus. Whoever welcomes the disciples also welcomes him. I could invite a disciple, one of Jesus' friends, to dinner at my house, which would mean that I am also inviting Jesus. What if I invited a pastor friend? Would I be inviting Jesus? Or if I invited a famous NBA player who points to heaven every time he scores, would that be inviting Jesus to dinner? What if I invited one of you? Would I be inviting Jesus? Do you see any of Jesus' friends around here? How many of you are friends of Jesus? Do you think you could invite Jesus to dinner? Yes, you could.
invite a friend of Jesus to dinner, you're also inviting Jesus to dinner. As we pray, point to someone who was a disciple of Jesus. You may even want to point to yourself. Pray with me. Jesus, we invite you into our lives. Help us to serve you by opening our hearts and our homes in love for all people. Amen. Amen. God, God bless and stay safe. Bye. That's all, folks. That's a wrap. Thank you, Miss Jane. The gospel lesson this morning is from Matthew 10, verses 40 through 42. Jesus said, whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward, and whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Really, doesn't that make you sit up a little straighter? When you are welcomed by someone else, they are also welcoming Christ. One could say this is an extension of us bearing the image of God. Or it could be an extension of our priesthood of all believers, where we are called to represent Christ to the world. The Apostle Paul posited that we are in Christ. And the Gospel of John tells us that Christ abides in us. We have a mystical union with Christ, so where we are, Christ is. This cuts two ways, though. Today's reading also speaks about those who are sent to us. When we welcome them, we welcome Christ. Hospitality is a basic Christian pr practice. We welcome others into our homes, around our tables, and into our lives. It's an extension of loving our neighbor. And because by welcoming them, we are also welcoming God in Christ, it is also an extension of loving God with our hearts, our souls, our minds, and strength. There was a famous monastery that had fallen on very hard times. People no longer came there to be nourished by prayer, and it was all but deserted. A handful of old monks shuffled through the buildings and praised God with heavy hearts. On the edge of the woods, near the monastery, an old rabbi had built a tiny hut. He would come there from time to time to fast and pray. No one ever spoke with him, but whenever he appeared, the word would be passed from brother to brother. The rabbi walks in the woods, and the monks would feel sustained by his prayerful presence. One day, the abbot decided to visit the rabbi and open his heart to him. So after the morning Eucharist, he set out through the woods. As he approached the hut, the abbot saw the rabbi standing in the doorway, his arms outstretched in welcome. It was as though he had been waiting there for some time. The two embraced like long-lost brothers. Then they stepped back and just stood there, smiling at one another with smiles their faces could hardly contain. After a while, the rabbi motioned the abbot to enter. In the middle of the room was a wooden table with the scriptures open on it. They sat there for a moment in the presence of the book. Then the rabbi began to cry. The abbot could not contain himself. He covered his face with his hands and began to cry too. And for the first time in his life, he cried his heart out. 
The two men sat there like lost children, filling the hut with their sobs and moistening the wood of the table with their tears. After the tears had ceased to flow and all was quiet again, the rabbi lifted his head. You and your brothers are serving God with heavy hearts, he said. You have come to ask a teaching of me. I will give you a teaching, but you can only repeat it once. After that, no one must ever say it aloud again. The rabbi looked straight at the abbot and said, the Messiah is among you. For a while, all was silent. And then the rabbi said, now you must go. The abbot left without ever looking back. The next morning, the abbot called his monks together. He told them that he had received a teaching from the rabbi who walks in the woods and that this teaching was never again to be spoken aloud. And then he looked at each of his brothers and said, the rabbi said that one of us is the Messiah. The monks were startled by this, saying, what could it mean? They asked themselves, is Brother John the Messiah? No, he's too old and crotchety. Is Brother Thomas? No, he's too stubborn and set in his ways. Am I the Messiah? What could that possibly mean? They were all deeply puzzled by the rabbi's teaching, but no one ever mentioned it again. As time went by, though, something unusual began to happen at the monastery. The monks began to treat one another with a very special reverence. There was a gentle, wholehearted quality about them now which was hard to describe, but very easy to notice. They lived with one another as brothers who had finally found something. And yet they prayed over the scriptures together as those who were still looking for something. Visitors found themselves deeply moved by the genuine caring and sharing that went on among the brothers. And before long, people were coming from far and wide to be nourished by the prayer life of these monks. And young men were asking once again to become part of their community. Let's take a closer look at today's reading. It would be easy to walk away from this passage thinking, sure, no problem. Jesus wants me to be welcoming. Hey, I'm great at that. Been there, done that, Jesus. What's next? Jesus' message is not that simple. The instructions he gives his disciples are not about extending welcome. They are actually about receiving welcome. They are about what it looks like and feels like for followers of Jesus to accept being welcomed in Jesus' name. More specifically, this is about welcoming prophets. It's about the risks and rewards of extending hospitality to God's provocative, truth-telling messengers. So if we put ourselves in their shoes... They're being sent out to share the good news of God's kingdom, and they go out in a very vulnerable position. They had no religious institution to back them, no political tools to wield, no cultural capital to spend. They had no power at all, except for the power of the Holy Spirit moving through them to heal and serve. Remember that Jesus told his first messengers to carry nothing, no money, no food, no extra clothes. He told them to assume a posture of humility and depend wholly on the hospitality of the people they wished to serve. Even the simplest, most basic need, like a cup of cold water on a hot day, would have to be met by others. So what does this mean for us who follow him today? Well, it might mean that we need to re-examine our cozy relationship with power and redefine our place in the world that Jesus loves. He wanted Christian witness to flow from humility and vulnerability, not complacency and comfort. He wanted his good news to be preached from a place that was not tempted or corrupted by human power. It is noteworthy that those Jesus says will be rewarded 
are not just the charismatic preacher or the prophet. The prize also goes to the one who serves. It goes to the one who hears the doorbell and opens the door. It goes to the one who hangs up the coats, washes the feet, pours the cool drink, and sets and clears the table. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. This is a sobering claim. What would happen if we took it seriously? How would our behavior and attitudes change if we believed, if we really believed that other people see Jesus every time they look at us? What would happen to the church and the world that we live in if we operated on the assumption that Jesus is visible in and through us at every moment, every relationship, every encounter or conversation, and yes, every conflict? What Jesus handed to his disciples when he commissioned them was his own reputation, his own character, his own standing in the world. Think about it. What a risk he took and what a responsibility we bear. There were other readings selected for today. The, the Old Testament reading is taken from the book of Jeremiah. I want to share that with you. This is Jeremiah chapter 28, beginning with verse 5. Then the prophet Jeremiah spoke to the prophet Hananiah in the presence of the priests and all the people who were standing in the house of the Lord. And the prophet Jeremiah said, Amen. May the Lord do so. May the Lord fulfill the words that you have prophesied and bring back to this place from Babylon the vessels of the house of the Lord and all the exiles. But listen now to this word that I speak in your hearing and in the hearing of all the people. The prophets who preceded you and me from ancient times prophesied war, famine, and pestilence against many countries and great kingdoms. As for the prophet who prophesies peace, when the word of that prophet comes true, then it will be known that the Lord has truly sent the prophet. Jeremiah reminds Hananiah that Israel's true prophets have prophesied war, famine, and pestilence. In other words, they have dared to tell God's people hard and holy truth. Now the word welcome takes on a whole different meaning in light of this Old Testament reading. It was easy for the Israelites to welcome smooth-talking Hananiah because he told them what they wanted to hear. It is something very different to welcome weird and weepy Jeremiah, the prophet of gloom. I want you to think about the risk that he took. What if no one offers him a cup of cold water when he is done speaking? What if every door slams shut at his approach? Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. The implication is that not everyone will welcome authentic prophets, but that does not excuse inaction. The message is still, go. The message is still, speak. The message is still carry God's image out into the world and do so with reverence, gentleness, humility, truthfulness, and most of all, love. And yes, there is risk involved, but there is also reward. I think about that community of monks and how it changed when they saw Christ in one another. What might happen if we do the same? May it be so.
This is the time we share our concerns and pray for one another. Annabelle asked for prayer for her friend who is losing her eyesight. So gracious God, we ask that you would be in the midst of that circumstance and that you would bring healing, that you would bring sight. I ask for prayers for Megan as she's still recuperating from her surgery and having lots of reoccurring nosebleeds. Lord, we just ask that she would have a chance to rest and recuperate and regain all of her eyesight. We're grateful for the, for the 80%, but we are asking for 100%. Angie wrote in that Chad is, as of Friday night, was still on the ventilator and he has developed pneumonia. So gracious God, we are praying for complete healing. We are praying that you would strengthen his lungs and, and eradicate all signs of pneumonia, heal those lungs and let him breathe on his own and speed his recovery up so he can get out of that hospital and back with his family. Lord, we ask you to surround him at this time. My friend John called this morning and he asked for prayers for those who are in the nursing homes as well as their caregivers all those who are working in the health care field Lord we know that this crisis is far from over and the challenges are great the isolation is really hard and I pray that you would surround each and every one in the nursing home who cannot see their family at this time and let them feel your presence and strengthen them as well as those who care for them. I also have a prayer request. I would ask that, that uh, I don't care who it is, what doctor, where. I have two people that are dear to me, Teresa and my friend Sue, and neither one of them have a complete diagnosis and have been sick a very long time. So I am asking you, oh God, you know what's wrong. I ask that you would give the right doctor, the right medical person, just a glimpse of insight so they would know how to treat them. And I ask that if, if that doesn't happen, that you would sovereignly heal both of them. In Jesus' name. Would you pray with me? Gracious God, you have not left yourself without a witness in any age or place. Wherever people have walked on this earth, you have taken up residence among them and revealed yourself to them. We thank you, O oh God, that you did not hide yourself from the people who seemed to merit your love. But we're even more grateful for your revelation to those who do not. And you have given us in Jesus not only a summons to love as you love, but an example of both what it means and what it costs. Today we ask that you would remind us of the love of Jesus Christ with which you claimed us as your own and we claim you as our own. Rekindle in us the oneness we experienced when we accepted your invitation to join you in covenant and let us go forth today renewed and empowered, ready to enlarge the circle of your covenant people. Make us quick to greet hesitation with generosity, suspicion with acceptance, anger with gentleness, and defensiveness with friendliness. When people ask us who we are, let us reveal whose we are. The world in which we live suffers for want of many things, but the one thing it needs above all others is the love with which you have loved us and for which you call us to become channels. So today, give us, O oh God, the will and the wisdom to heed your summons. It is in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen.
As always, we are grateful for your support. This week, we have received gifts in the mail, gifts given through our website, and those gifts are what make this ministry possible. Those gifts are what has enabled us to uh, increase our bandwidth, and, and we're looking for increasing our online presence with with things like a, a good a good quality camera. We've been given a gift to be able to purchase that, and I give thanks to God for that. So let us pray over the gifts we have received, the gifts we are about to receive from each one here. Gracious God, your hospitality has surrounded us and welcomed us, even when we only grudgingly extended hospitality to sisters and brothers who are also your children. May we grow each day in our willingness to be welcoming disciples, not just to those who look like us, talk like us, or think like us. May our offering this morning be received not just in gratitude for your hospitality, but as our way to extend comfort and welcome to those for whom your love is a mystery. We pray this in the name of the one who taught us to pray, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and give us, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our final hymn is Yezu, Yezu.
I want to share a benediction that uh, we discovered in our book group this week from the book The Grave Robber. You go nowhere by accident. Wherever you go, God is sending you. Wherever you are, God has put you there. He has a purpose in your being there. Christ, who indwells you, has something he wants to do through you where you are. So believe this and go in his grace and his love and his power. Amen. Let us sing our final benediction. Shalom to you. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom.